At the beginning of this season, I invented a new stat. Well, I guess actually I invented two new stats, and the goals of these stats were to create something that was simple and easy to understand and, and also just sort of give people a leaderboard like this that they could sort through and come back to throughout the season. The season's wrapping up now, so what I'm going to be doing is taking a look at that leaderboard and sort of, you know, grading myself, seeing if there's anything we can take away from these new stats that I invented. Now, if you're not familiar with them, I did make a video about it a few months ago. You can check it out. But even if you haven't seen that video, I can give you like the 20 second summary right now, which is that stats are called good piece of hitting and good piece of pitching. And they're, and they're pretty simple. A uh, good piece of hitting is when you hit the ball hard. In this case, hard hit is defined as uh, 95 miles per hour or greater, or you walk. That's it. A good piece of hitting is when you either hit the ball hard or you walk. And if you're a pitcher, good piece of pitching is you either coax soft contact, soft contact and in at least how I define it, it's less than 80 miles per hour off the bat, or you strike the batter out. And that's really it. We're just kind of looking at, um, you know, a very sort of binary approach to grading plate appearances. And that's what really excites me about it. It's not, you know, if you're talking about like a stat, like StatCast, uh, XWOBA or something like that, you know, there's degrees of good and bad. This is binary. This is a very binary approach to it. You know, we're saying thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, it, was it good or was it bad? And that's what I really like about this stat. So uh, with the help of Max Goldstein from uh, Max Sporting Studio, uh, we put together this leaderboard. And, and now the season is nearly over. There's about uh, five games left for each team, I think, maybe four or five games left. So, you know, for example, for the pitchers, probably about one start left each. Um, we're just going to kind of go through the leaderboards and see if there's anything we can take away from this experiment. You know, is this reflective of who's good and who's not good in Major League Baseball right now. So what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to drag this uh, minimum plate appearances filter. We're going to start with the hitters. We're going to be looking at good piece of hitting. And uh, we're just going to see, you know, who leads the league. And we're going to go to 400. Um, you know, that's not quite qualified for batting title, I know, but we, I also want to make sure we get, like, full-time catchers in there, uh, if that makes sense. So we're going to sort by a good piece of hitting percent. And uh, the league leader is Juan Soto. And I think immediately, off the bat, this is a win. This is a win because I think deep down we know Juan Soto has been the best hitter in baseball this year. And my stat agrees. And, you know, how has he done it? Well, he's at 216 hard hit balls. He's walked 117 times. That means on 333 uh, occasions so far, he has done a good piece of hitting. And, you know, you divide that or, uh, you know, with his plate appearances and his good piece of hitting percent is 54.3%. So basically he's getting a thumbs up more than half the time. And the only other hitter who can say that is Vladimir Guerrero Jr., which again, I think is a win. Uh, you know, Guerrero's been, you know, at the top of uh, most hitting stats throughout the season. I think Soto's passed him in a lot of them over the last month or so, but I think you could, you could definitely make the argument, hey, Juan Soto and Vladimir Guerrero, uh, two best hitters in baseball this year. Um, and then we get down to the third, and I'm not like, you know, I don't want to sound like a Josh Bell hater or anything like that. I'm really not. He's had a perfectly fine season, but he's not the third best hitter in baseball. And, and now what's starting to be revealed is, you know, potential shortcomings from this metric. And I think the biggest shortcoming um, is there's no inclusion of anything to do with launch angle. And when you look at Josh Bell, this is a guy who... You know, hits the ball hard, but he hits a lot of ground balls. And so he, I'm sure he's had a lot of hard hit ground ball outs. And so what's happening is that he's getting these hard hit balls, which are good pieces of hitting. And yet he's also hitting a lot of ground balls, which honestly, ground balls, not always the best piece of hitting. Um, and Soto is ground ball heavy too, but he's, he's, he's kind of he's so good it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, and that's, that's a pattern you're going to see. Josh Bell fits that mold for sure this year. Um, you know, Yelich, same thing. Um, Eric Hosmer, same thing. These guys are all, you know, within the top 30. Um, but, you know, not not what I would consider to be top-tier hitters in the league this year. Um, and then, you know, as you go down, you get some more names. You get your judge. Uh, Machado, I'm fairly happy with. Um, I think Machado's gotten kind of unlucky this year at the plate in terms of his batted ball quality. Uh, Josh Donaldson, interesting. Uh, you get Votto and you get Harper. I think that's great. You know, Votto and Harper have both had, you know, really good years this year. So you're you're happy to see Votto and Harper towards the top. And then, um, you know, you go beyond that. 
Matt Olson, he's had a great year. Stanton, Tatis, you know, Goldschmidt's had good... Hey, Jesse Winker's had a great year. Tucker, Freeman, you know, these... This is a solid list. If we're describing, you know, who's been the best hitters in baseball this year, overall, I would say I'm pretty pleased with what's happening at the top of this list. I'm sure there's uh, questions about Otani. He's right here. Otani is in Francisco Lindor, Yuli Gurriel range, which, you know, probably not quite reflecting uh, how good he's been at the plate this year. And it's interesting to me because, you know, when I think of Otani, I'm like, that guy crushes the ball, but... Truthfully, uh, his hard rate, hard hit rate of 95 miles per hour on a plate appearance basis, it's good, but it's not elite. And I think maybe if you changed up the threshold to like 100 or 105 miles per hour, I think then he'd probably get more shine. And that's sort of the, that's that's the thing about this. You know, we're not, what I didn't want to do is basically build my version of x woba because I think stats like that are just inherently more difficult to grasp and we just wanted something simple a good piece of hitting is you hit the ball hard or you walk you know and and you know and there's going to be weaknesses with that you know there's no launch angle component and quite frankly for this stat you know a 95 mile per hour ground out is rated the same as a 110 mile per hour fly ball which is uh, almost certainly going to be a home run so that's you know that's that's just part of it, you know, and I, I'm willing to trade off some of that accuracy for the simplicity because I, I really think that's what matters most to me. We need sort of these entry-level type stats that people can grasp. Um, I do want to look at the bottom of the list, too, because one weakness I diagnosed, you know, very early was that I felt like it was very possible to be a bottom-of-the-barrel hitter in terms of good pieces of, hit, of uh, hitting percentage, but also be a productive hitter in Major League Baseball. But I'm looking at the bottom three right now. You know, Fletcher Simmons, Willie Castro, Nick Ahmed, these guys haven't been great this year. So I think there's something to be said about that. Fletcher in years past has had, like, you know, been towards the bottom of the barrel in terms of good piece of hitting. Uh, I should point out that we have stats for all the stat cast here and not just 2021 on here. Um, but, you know, Fletcher hasn't, hit well this year um in my opinion uh it's just you know you look at his ops plus i mean i'll I'll tell you the story pretty good uh andrelton simmons same thing but then you you do see guys like omar narvaez and omar narvaez is a guy who he's an all-star this year um and he's he's no doubt he's slumped he's slumped in the second half but he he's an all-star this year he had really good first half at the plate especially for a catcher so um you know narvaez maybe an example of someone who can still thrive with a, uh, a skill set that's not conducive to uh, doing well in good piece of hitting percent. Uh, another guy that could fit that bill is like a Kiel Badu's had a good year this year. Um, you know, Javi Baez has, has done really well at the Mets. Uh, Nicky Lopez, uh, you know, kind of the maybe the strongest example I can give of a hitter who, you know, is not going to do well in terms of good piece of hitting, the metric I made, but in terms of, you know, results on the field, I mean, Nicky Lopez has had a great season this year. I mean, phenomenal, actually, in my opinion. Uh, Nicky Lopez uh, definitely being overlooked right now. So shout out to him. Um, let's move on to the pitchers here. Actually, one more guy I want to look at. I'm going to drop this threshold just a bit. Is uh, Grandal. Uh, Grandal, 360 plate appearances on the year, so it's not really a full season for him. But he is uh, he's second on the list. He's between Soto and Guerrero. And I kind of like that because, I mean, Grandal stats this year, you know, you can talk about the batting average, but he's been, I mean, for a catcher especially, it's just phenomenal, at the, uh, you know, as a hitter this year. And I think this stat really allows him to shine because it says, hey, Grandal walks, you know, uh, almost in a quarter of his plate appearances, and that's a good piece of hitting in my mind, getting on base, you know. And uh, his hard hit rate's pretty solid as well. So, yeah, there's Grandal. Let's move on to the pitchers here. Um Max has done such a great job on this leaderboard. I just want to make sure um, you all know that uh, this is his work. And, uh, you know, definitely just check out his other work because he's got a bunch of leaderboards that are way more, you know, complex and just fun to look at than this. Um, so shout-outs to Max. The the number one pitcher by good piece of pitching percent, which I will just to review, is is your soft hit balls, 80 miles per hour or less, and strikeouts. Though that's what a good piece of pitching is. That's Corbin Burns. And then second is Zach Wheeler. And I'm I'm fairly pleased with that because it's starting to look like Burns and Wheeler is the Cy Young race in the National League. Um, you know, as of when I'm recording this, Scherzer just had a not-so-great start. 
Um, and you could almost say the same about Garrett Cole too. Garrett Cole had a not so great start today against the Blue Jays. So I, you know, uh, but yeah, it looks like in the National League it's between Burns and Wheeler. And um, so I'm pleased that they're the top two um, in terms of good piece of pitching percent. And what's cool about the Burns and the Wheeler thing is that I think it's it's just an interesting discussion about volume versus rate, right? You know, uh, Burns has clearly been the best pitcher in baseball on a rate basis, but Wheeler has offered uh, unprecedented volume. You know, his volume is far beyond that of Burns. And in terms of what I value, um, you know, I would probably lean towards the volume. So I, if, I think if the if I were a BBWAA voter for this award and you handed me the ballot today, I think I would vote for Wheeler. I also understand that Burns is like, you know, close to setting like FIP records, which is crazy. You know, FIP is, uh, it's an important stat for sure. But yet at the same time, I think that, you know, for, for ERA, uh, or I mean not ERA, but like, you know, just runs in innings pitched more often than not is going to give you the right answer for the Cy Young Award winner. And so I would, I would give it to Wheeler. I'd also point out that Wheeler is playing with just uh, a, a doo-doo defense behind him all year. I mean, he's a ground ball pitcher and, you know, uh, uh, Alec Bohm has been his third baseman for the majority of the year. It's like, gosh, you know, it's a miracle. It's a miracle he's in the Cy Young race. So that's kind of my spiel. But it's interesting, too, because I think this is reflected in the um, the leaderboard itself because, you know, on a rate basis, Burns is the best. His, his GPP percent is higher than that of Wheeler or, or anyone else in the league. However, if you sort by just instances of good pieces of pitching – you can see that Wheeler is uh, comfortably ahead just in terms of the entire league, you know? And um, and I think this is really, you know, maybe even more than the percent, this is where the stats start to shine because there's a volume component here with just, hey, how many times did you coax off contact? How many strikeouts do you have on the year? And you look at these top guys that this list is producing. Wheeler, Woodruff, Burns, Alcantara, Cole, Scherzer, Bueller, Rias, Gosman, Nola, Ray, Morton, Barrios, Castillo, Wainwright, Ivaldi, Musgrove. I mean, these guys, this is like this is the like the laundry list. This is who have been the best pitchers in MLB all year. So I think, you know, when you when you look at this stat, you might want to look at the percent for hitters, but maybe for pitchers there's a lot to be said about just the volume. The the GPP is a counting stat rather than a rate stat because I mean this is a phenomenal list. I would say maybe only Nola is the guy that sticks out here. Nola has had a, a disappointing year by his standards, but everyone else here has been great. Um, no doubt about that. I mean, the, uh, you know, I, I'm happy to see Alcantara too because I think Alcantara has just been phenomenal all year with the volume that he's offering as a pitcher. Um, so I'm happy to see him fourth on my leaderboard for anything. Um, but yeah, and then Burns is still third, even though you know he's faced less batters than anyone we can see on the screen right now. So that, that gives you some credit for Burns as well. Uh, I do want to um, move this back because I want to highlight, um, you know, relievers as well as uh, Jacob deGrom. So Jacob deGrom is, uh, you know, once you get him in the mix, uh, he's the best pitcher in baseball. And I think that's fairly obvious. Uh, you know, he, he struck out 45% of the batters he faced added another 15% in terms of coaxing soft contact. So for DeGrom, his, his good piece of pitching percent, you know, he's, he's getting that thumbs up 60% of the time, um, you know, which, you know, maybe if you even went as far as to compare him to someone like Soto, who is at 54, you know, on a rate basis, DeGrom probably the best player in baseball this year. Um, and I agree with that. I think it's a shame he couldn't finish out the season and really prove that because he had a chance to do something really special. He had a chance to have one of those 1968 Bob Gibson, 1999-2000 Pedro Martinez type seasons. But he's number one. I'm happy with that. And then as far as these relievers, you know, you've got Hader number one, and I think that's perfectly fine. I think Hader would be considered by many to be just the top reliever in baseball. So when you see him at number one, you're like, that's good. Um, and then let me switch over to the pitchers. Sorry. Um, and then and then seconds Brooks Raley and Brooks Raley's had a good year. Um, but I was it's one of those things where it's like yeah I was surprised to see his name you know, and maybe that's me overlooking Brooks Raley. I know he's had a good year, but you know the next names on this list as far as relievers go are Iglesias and Trinan and 
you know, Taylor Rogers, Liam Hendricks, or Alice Chapman, Paul Seawald, you know, it's like, I know Paul Seawald's had an amazing year, um, but maybe Brooks Raley was cruising under the radar. Brooks Raley uh, really got on this list with, uh, you know, coaxing soft contact. That was sort of his thing. Um, he's faced 201 batters this year, and he's coached soft contact, so below 80 miles per hour. I mean, that's really soft contact, um, you know, 23% of the time um, to go with a, a strikeout rate over 30%. So good for Brooks Raley. Maybe a guy worth paying attention to in the future. I'm not sure if anyone would consider Brooks Raley in a, like a top-tier reliever going into the next year, but maybe we should, you know, maybe just based on what this is showing. Maybe we should. Um, bottom of the barrel type pitchers. I'm going to look at starters first. Um, bottom of the barrel type pitchers. Uh, Jose Urania, uh, Mitch Keller, Jake Arrieta, Chichi Gonzalez, please Zach, Fulte. I'm pretty happy with this for the most part. I feel like these are pitchers that generally haven't been good. So, you know, um, I do think in terms of the bottom of the leaderboard, probably doing better with good piece of pitching than good piece of hitting because I do think there is space for a, a hitter to not succeed in terms of good piece of hitting while also still being a good hitter. Um, there's going to be guys too, though, you know, who are good on here that are towards the bottom of the barrel in terms of percent. And that's, you know, Sensatella. He has his way of doing things. And um, I like Sensatella a lot. I think he's um, a guy that is maximizing his um, play style for course. And so it's tough to, to grade him on this. Um, Chris Flexen is not playing in course, but he's had a good year. Um, so, again, you know, maybe a more traditional look at a guy who can be towards the bottom and still be good. So, uh, again, guys, check out this leaderboard. It's great. We have, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, it's not just this year. We can look at uh, any year, if we go look at all, you know, you might want to ask yourself, well, who's the best for a qualified season as a hitter? And, um, and that's going to be Soto this year. Those are those Soto and Guerrero are actually breaking the record of uh, Miguel Cabrera in 2015. So that these two are having the best seasons overall in terms of a uh, good piece of uh, hitting. Because StatCast era began in 2015, we can't go earlier than that. Uh, and then you can look at pitchers who face at least... 500 batters all time and um yeah Garrett Cole 2019 uh, is your is your all-time leader there so uh guys thank you so much for watching I think that this is going to be part of a big pattern for this Foolish Bailey channel for the next couple months which is that I'm really going to be looking at things that I did earlier in the year and then going back and grading them so you know, in these next couple months, I'm going to be really active on here. Be on a lookout for a video where I'm grading the Foolish 50, you know, now that we have some hindsight. I'm grading, you know, the, the players that I liked or disliked. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff like that. And so, you know, just be ready for it because I'm, really, re I'm ready to, like, you know, um, pump out a good amount of content as we get into the playoffs and off season on this channel in particular. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. You know, it's been, a, it's been a great year, um, and just, yeah, I, most of the playoff picture seems decided, but uh, enjoy, enjoy that AL wildcard race. That is crazy. That is going to be a lot of fun to watch. So enjoy baseball, love baseball, as Urban Santana said, smell baseball, and yeah, enjoy.